Hi, my name is Natalie and I am presenting speed skating and its connections to physics. Here is a picture to give you an idea of what the sport looks like. This is exhibiting speed skating during the men's 1000 meter race during the US Olympic short track trials. Now for a description on the Olympic sport itself. Speed skating involves racing against the clock and competitors along an oval shaped track. The total track length is 400 meters long. Men's speed skating was first included in the Olympics in 1924, while women's was included in 1960. Men's events include the 500, 1000, 1500, 5000, and 10,000. Women's events include the 500, 1000, 1500, 3000, and 5000. During individual events, skaters race in pairs along the inner and outer rings while switching lanes each lap for equal distance. Team races include two teams of three, keeping the formation of a line in order to minimize air resistance. The U.S. speed skating team for the 2014 Sochi Olympics consists of Anna Ringsred, Brian Hansen, Brittany Bowe, Emery Lehman, Jonathan Garcia, Heather Richardson, Jillian Ruckard, Kelly Gunther, Joey Mantia, Lauren Kolonowski, Maria Lamb, Patrick Meek, Mitchell Whitemore, Shawnee Davis, and Tucker Fredericks. Now to discuss how speed skating is judged. Olympic style judging contains a chief timer, time recorder, six timers, and a judge. The skater will be judged to have completed their distance when they touch the finish line with their skate. The time recorded determines the winner. In case of a tie, the judge concentrates on the blade placement rather than time. You may be thinking how speed skating applies to physics principles. Newton's first law applies at the start of the race while at rest. Speed skaters dig their front foot into the ice with the tip and plant their back blade. This exemplifies the statement that says an object at rest will remain at rest unless acted on by another force. Their start exhibits Newton's second law by the equation force equals mass times acceleration. The more force they use at the start, the more they will accelerate. Newton's third law also applies when the skater exerts force on the ice and the ice pushes and exerts a force back on the skater. This is taking place while the skater is stepping and pushing. The harder the push, the faster the acceleration. During the turns, the ice pushes the skater towards the center as they push the skate the opposite way. The harder they push into the ice, the less likely they are to slide. Now I am going to demonstrate the lab answering the question, will a heavier skater have an advantage over a lighter skater? I will test this question by rolling two carts across a flat surface. The first cart will be nudged at the side to make it turn. I will repeat this action to the second cart after adding more mass but keeping the speed the same. In conclusion, the heavier second cart was more difficult to turn and requires the larger force. This lab relates to speed skating by addressing the question, will a heavier skater have an advantage over a lighter skater? The answer is no. The lighter skater has an advantage because they do not require as much exerted force like the first cart with no mass. Thank you for watching and here are my sources.